This episode is brought to you by Wear Buff, your go-to for Buffalo-inspired apparel. Get your hands on stylish t-shirts, hoodies, and more at wearbuff.com. That's W-E-A-R-B-U-F dot com. And make sure you use the promo code TWB at checkout for 10% off your first order. Stay Buffalo proud with Wear Buff. Training camp is coming to a close and the Bills' first preseason game is right around the corner. We'll be talking about some of my favorite position battles going into the preseason this week on the Wandering Buffalo podcast. And now listening to the Wandering Buffalo podcast with your host, Justin Gottard. Bills Mafia, welcome into another episode of the Wandering Buffalo podcast, a show on the Buffalo Fanbase Podcast Network. My name is Justin, I'm your host tonight, and just off the top, Bills Mafia, we made it. Um, the off season always feels so long while we're in it, and then we get towards the end of training camp, and even when training camp starts in Rochester, it's... It happens so fast, and it feels like a blink of the eye. And all of a sudden, we're playing preseason games, and the season's starting. So we're we're right on the cusp of the season. And anybody that's been listening to this show, I talked a little bit last week about just how much I love this time of year. The competition of training camp, the players that we've added in the offseason, and how they're assimilating to the team, the draft picks the ability to start looking towards, you know, the depth, the future, players that are going to have impacts this year. So I just kind of wanted to take this time before this this game is played on Saturday against the Bears to just kind of take a look at all of these positions that we've already been watching the position battles unfolding during camp, right? The game's actually being played the preseason games, the live action against a different team that wants to win, regardless of how much these teams, you know, don't really care about preseason. These guys are out there fighting for jobs. They, they're, they're trying to make plays and they're trying to, to win. So seeing that action, some of these guys, you know, their first action in the NFL, this time of the year, is, it, it's just, honestly, I love it. And for all those reasons, so there's a lot of interesting battles up and down this roster. And honestly, some of the players I'm going to talk about today aren't even really like in a competition. They're, they're kind of just already there as depth. You know, uh, an incumbent starter in front of them. So it's not like they're looking to make huge jumps up or down the depth chart. It's just kind of, Maybe I haven't seen this guy in a Bills uniform yet, and I'm I'm excited for the first taste. So starting out with the quarterback room, super simple. I really doubt we see much or any Josh Allen. He has played in the preseason in the past. But the name that stands out for me here is Shane Bouchelle. And Mitch Trubisky, I have every bit of confidence, is going to be our quarterback too this year. I think Shane Bouchel has some traits that make him exciting to at least be in the room. And Mitch Trubisky, we're in a situation where if he plays well in preseason, he's probably going to end up getting another crack starting somewhere just with his pedigree and starting experience and all that. So I, I really feel like we're on a timeline of we're going to be looking for another backup quarterback at some point. So I'd like to see Shane Bouchel get some some reps in here, see what he looks like with the team, get him some experience, and, and kind of see what we have there. Um, again, something I've talked about a lot on this podcast is wanting more of a, like a long-term answer at the backup quarterback position. And... You know, it's it's really easy to say Josh Allen goes down, we're screwed either way. But I I've advocated for using a later round draft pick to just kind of ensure that you have 
a backup that you feel good about for you know several years instead of having to replace that position all the time. Um, so maybe Shane Buchel, we've seen some flashes here and there with um, in in his previous playing time, previous team. Let's let's let him go out there and and see what he see what he brings to the team. Um, the wide receiver room, I think, is one of the most interesting camp battles, preseason battles that we have on the roster. And it's not so much the the top end of the depth. I, I think that's pretty locked in with, you know, Coleman, Curtis Samuel, Khalil Shakir. I think Matt Collins is a lock. And I, honestly, I thought he was kind of a lock the moment we saw the signing just for his special teams alone. Seeing him throughout training camp, I feel like he's he's going to have a role in this team. Um, so we're talking a team that usually keeps six. Last year we kept five receivers. So we're talking between the likes of Tyrell Shavers, Chase Claypool, MVS, Justin Shorter, KJ Hamler, Xavier Johnson, Brian Thompson, Andy Isabella, Lawrence Keys. All of those guys duking it out for one, maybe two spots. I think we've seen some drops from MVS throughout the preseason. I'm, I'm sorry, training camp. And, you know, I, I saw a post on, on Twitter earlier today. That it was somebody saying, like, no way we're going to cut MVS with his, you know, guaranteed contract that we just signed him to. That contract is somewhere around, like, $2 million. We just got rid of Diggs with like a $30 million dead cap. Uh, we've seen it in the past with Calvin Benjamin that, you know, Bean makes makes the wrong prediction, makes the wrong investment in a player, and he's not afraid to move on. So I don't think that guaranteed money for MVS is, is anything that, you know, guarantees him a spot on the roster. Chase Claypool being kind of banged up. Tyrell Shavers making a lot of noise, especially towards the tail end of training camp. So he's somebody that, you know, kind of flies a little bit under the radar. He was with the team last year, ends up on the practice squad. He made some noise last year too, and and there's kind of a spot here for the for the taking. You know, Justin Shorter we haven't seen much action from. KJ Hamler and Andy Isabella, they're very similar type players. They have the returnability. Is this year the is this the year that one of them, you know, kind of sticks onto the roster? Maybe Hamler stays healthy and and makes some plays during the preseason. I think this is a super interesting battle for, like I said, one, maybe two spots there. The running back room. Again, very unlikely we see very much of James Cook. Ty Johnson being a little bit banged up kind of leaves us with the mix of Ray Davis, Darrington Evans, and Frank Gore Jr. And Ty Johnson is somebody I'm super excited to have back in the building. Ray Davis, I think, changes the equation a little bit. But we have seen throughout training camp Some fumble issues pop up with Ray Davis, and every one of us that's been watching the Bills games under Sean McDermott, we all know how McDermott feels about ball security and fumbles, and we know it all too well with with James Cook. Want to see if any of that carries over into the preseason, if there are kind of fluky things during practice. Uh, The ball security is is like a must-have under Sean McDermott. Darrington Evans, I remember his last in with the Bills, and he had some flash plays and was just, you know, fighting an uphill battle to be on the roster. So, you know, with kind of the uncertainty uncertainty right now of Ty Johnson's injury, is he able to, you know, make a little noise and and be able to at least stick on that initial roster? And then Frank Gore Jr., 
somebody that's coming in with, you know, no expectations really for him. But it anytime I see, you know, one of these kids of an NFL legend, I don't necessarily think that that gives them like a direct path to being a superstar. I'm not by any means saying that. But there is a certain level of being around a guy that, you know, knew what it took to be in the league. And especially for Frank Gore, you know, making like a 20 year career out of being a running back, which is usually you're lucky if you get a second contract from a lot of these guys. Um, So just knowing the habits, having that, you know, voice in his room, having that person behind him, I, I'm excited to see what he does. And, you know, he's not the biggest guy. He's not the fastest guy. He's going to get some opportunity in the preseason to make some noise. So I'm very confident in what we have in James Cook and Ty Johnson. And if we can round out that group with, you know, one of these other guys popping off, could be a really exciting running back room. The tight end room, not really a spot that, I was expecting much competition at the one, two, very locked in Dalton Kincaid and Dawson Knox. And going into the training camp, I, I saw no path that Quentin Morris wouldn't be on the roster. He's been, he's been good in the moments that he's had to play as, you know, a number two tight end due to injuries and he contributes all over the place on special teams. Um, so didn't really see a path to him not being on the roster. Um, but the Bills did bring in Trey McKitty and Zach Davidson is around. And Zach Davidson in particular just keeps making plays during training camp. And honestly, the more I see from the guy... I think it might be really hard to keep him off this roster. You're not going to likely keep four tight ends, uh, especially when you're already having Reggie Gilliam on the roster as a fullback. Maybe there's a situation where somebody sticks around as a tight end and can play fullback. I don't see Reggie Gilliam going anywhere either. So I I think this this is probably going to be a room for me uh, where I end up Pretty disappointed that that I have to see one of these guys go. The offensive line, I'm I'm strictly looking at what the depth looks like here. I feel very good about the starting players. There is, you know, the positional switch for McGovern and David Edwards moving up to starter. When we originally signed David Edwards, I felt pretty good about him being a starter, and then he ended up, you know, as the primary First guy off the bench, basically. My biggest concern with this, the starting offensive line is some of the, the miscues we've seen with the exchanges between McGovern and Allen. Hopefully, you know, that can kind of clean itself up. But the the depth here is where I'm very intrigued, uh, particularly because of the, like, unreasonable health luck that we had with the offensive line last year being able to play the whole season together I'm not hoping for any injuries by any stretch of the imagination but having two years in a row of perfect health against the offensive line is just would be pretty bonkers for the NFL Um, somebody brought in that I felt really good about you know maybe competing for a starting spot maybe being that first guy off the bench was Lyle Collins. He has had such an injury-plagued career and then, you know, gets a chance with Buffalo. He's a player that Buffalo's had their eye on for a while, and he's now dealing with injuries in training camp. So I'm excited about the name. I was hoping for, you know, good things there, at least reliable depth, and... I just don't feel I don't feel as great about that as as I previously did. 
some other exciting guys on the offensive line that we're going to see in the preseason game preseason games uh Cedric Van Prang Granger somebody I'm very excited about for what he can be to the team now plus going into the future Alec Anderson and Ryan Vandemark both players that have kind of done this just keep sticking around keep working and you know, able to stick on the roster. So I I feel pretty good about them as backups. We also haven't seen a ton of action from those two guys. Um, Then rounding out the group with guys like Travis Clayton, uh, Tyling Grable, you know, some of these recent draft picks from the Bills. You don't always expect huge things from them, especially, you know, late round offensive linemen year one with the depth in front of them kind of solidified. But this is these are the types of players where, you know, Brandon Bean and the scouting department have by by my book, they've done an excellent job drafting, um, in particular getting hits on late round picks. And these are guys that you're you're not really gonna see unless catastrophe happens during the season. And this is our opportunity to to get the first look at them. So when we're talking depth next season, we have an idea of who these guys are. Um, so offensive line, hard to watch in in real time during games, especially when you start talking the backups and you know even figuring out who's out there and whatnot. But keep an eye on the offensive line because I, I do think that there are possibly concerns in regards to the to the depth once we get past a couple guys. The defensive side of the ball, there's a lot of players on defense that I'm going to be interested in seeing how many snaps they get through the preseason. Just because we have like a lot of established names, but some new guys in new roles, guys like Epinesa. I doubt we see very much of of a guy like Epinesa, but kind of set to take on a bigger role here. Dwayne Smoot, new to the team. Javon Solomon, a draft pick this year. Cameron Klein, who was on the practice squad last year. Kingsley Jonathan, who, again, has been making a ton of noise in camp. He, he always seems to be kind of right on the cusp of really latching onto this roster. And then Casey Tuhill, who... Super high effort guy. I was excited when the Bills brought him in. Kind of with some some moves that happened after that. There's guys that get me more excited. But kind of see how all this plays out in the preseason. This is where players have, you know, the biggest opportunity to to make noise to stick around on the roster. Uh defensive tackle, very, very similar situation to me. I feel very good about our starters. And then when we get into the depth, it's it's a whole new group. I mean, Eli Anku sticking around right now. He's been, you know, up and down on the roster, practice squad guy for quite some time. We have the addition of Austin Johnson, Deshaun Williams, Dwayne Carter in the draft. We got a guy in Gable Stevenson. I'm sorry, Gable Stevenson. Really excited to see what he looks like in a game setting. So that conglomerate of players, I feel, I feel like whoever comes out of this as our depth players, we've upgraded from last year. But I want to see how much. I want to see what it looks like. Feel great about Ed Oliver and Daquan Jones. We do a ton of rotating on on the defensive side of the on the defensive line. So I'm excited to see what some of these new guys look like in in game action. The linebacker room again, feel great about the starters. There's a lot of new in the linebacker room as well and you know, we see another year of development for Dorian Williams and Bale Inspector. We bring in some veterans in Nick Moreau, 
Deion Jones. We have a draft pick in Edifon Ulafosio. Again, like I said, feel great about the starters, but Matt Milano coming back from a pretty serious injury. You know, dealt with all kinds of injuries in the linebacker room last year. We all know the story. AJ Klein coming off his family vacation. I want to see what particularly I'm looking forward to here is Dorian Williams and what he looks like with a year under his belt. From what I've saw in training camp and kind of videos coming out and whatnot, he looks great playing downhill. He really showcases his athleticism, kind of his instincts. But in passing situations, he, he kind of has that half step hesitation and you know, being able to have some range in coverage as a linebacker in this defense is is absolutely paramount. So really excited to see what he looks like. And, you know, I think chances are we're going to see a lot of reps from Dorian Williams. Balen Spector kind of falls into the, the same category for me. But, you know, being a later round pick, less expectations on him. But remember going back to last year when... We all didn't really know the plan at the middle linebacker position. Before injuries were taking over, Balen Spector was... He was taking a lot of first-team reps. Unfortunately for Balen Spector, he's had a really hard time staying healthy. So, kind of want to get the opportunity to see what he looks like with some additional game action. Because what what the coaching staff was seeing throughout training camp last year was enough to impress them enough to have him in the conversation of, you know, could this guy be the starter? Um, So two guys I'm really excited for there. The cornerback room, Kyrie Elam has to be, you know, the number one person that I want to see here. I think he's had like a crazy good training camp and it's going to be tough to crack that top tool with Razul Douglas and Christian Benford. This one is more for me of like what the cornerback three position looks like and what the future is there because we, we only, we only have Razul Douglas under contract this year. Um, Jamarcus Ingram Another guy I'm excited to see, he's kind of done the the practice squad, work your way, stick around, and we'll develop you. And somebody I was excited about, you know, being in the mix last year. And I think there's more opportunity to, to get some swings at the plate this year, uh, at least to, you know, round out some depth. Again, a, another position that we've really struggled with injuries throughout the past couple years in the cornerback room. So whoever ends up being cornerback three, I expect them to see a lot of playing time. I expect it to be Kyrie Elam, but I think there's some good competition there. And then, you know, kind of the the tail end of the depth chart there too. Takori Couch has been making some plays during the preseason. I think he's, you know, kind of got it's kind of in a position where he's going to have to get that one year under the belt before he's able to possibly make a push for the roster. But it's a name I'm keeping an eye on because in some of the action that we've seen from him through training camp, he's been making some plays. On the defensive, last on the defensive side of the ball is where I have the most intrigue. I think there's the most questions here. I think there's there's a lot of questions and there's also a lot of bodies. And it's it's the safety room. You got Taylor Rapp. We have Cole Bishop who's dealing with injuries. We have Mike Edwards who's dealing with injuries. We have Damar Hamlin further removed from you know his his incident in Cincinnati. We've just added Kareem Jackson. D. Delaney's on the roster who has a lot of playing experience. Terrell Burgess, who 
was, I believe, a third round pick that just hasn't really stuck around. If there's a coaching staff that can take, you know, a reclamation third round project at safety and make them into a viable starter, I have all the faith in the world in that being McDermott and Bobby Babbage. This is and it's not unprecedented, right? We had Jordan Poyer and Micah Hyde, who were both, you know, kind of outcasts, not sticking around on on their respective teams, and ended up being the best safety duo that this organization has ever seen. So I, I think the injuries there kind of give us a chance to explore some of this depth a little bit. Unfortunately, the injuries are to, you know, two of the two of the three players that I thought were going to be, you know, the the top contenders for taking these spots. Damar Hamlin has had a great training camp from everything I've seen. Interesting, interested to see what he looks like out there, you know, further removed again from from the situation in uh, Cincinnati. So safety room is I'm going to be keeping my eyeballs on that the entire game I think that while while the injuries to Bishop and Edwards the timing really sucks you know the rookies really this playing time is really valuable for the rookies I think Mike Edwards coming to a new team he was already coming back from an injury he's dealing with another injury he hasn't had really any time during training camp to to kind of get acclimated to everything going on. Bream Jackson, an older veteran, played a lot of football, started a lot of games. I think he's interesting in the mix as as you know maybe a depth player, but at the age that he's at right now, I, I don't see that as being a signing, you know, where they brought him into the room and said, hey, man, can we get you to sign a contract so you can be a depth player that never sees the field and maybe we'll use you on special teams? I, I think it maybe signals that there's a little bit more reason to be concerned with some of these injuries. I think it's an interesting signing nonetheless. There are some... St- uh, big names out there still at the safety position. The fact that we didn't go kind of big game hunting there and we've added guys like Kareem Jackson and Terrell Bur- Burgess makes me feel a little bit better about these injuries. Like we're not we're not looking for season long answers, maybe some band aids, some stop caps. But there's all kinds of bodies there. Throw Cam Lewis in the mix too. Obviously re signed him this year. He's played some safety as these injuries started happening. He started taking more reps at safety during camp. Maybe somebody that's in the mix to start at least to, you know, get the season rolling. Um, So ton of intrigue for me in the safety room. But these are some of the positions that, you know, some of the players that I'm looking at during the preseason game coming up on Saturday. We will have another episode next week kind of breaking down the game against the Bears, kind of who separated themselves from the pack a little bit, who we need to see more from, who's getting us excited. Um, hopefully we get to see you know, some of the bigger names out there as they're assimilating to the new team. But hey, either way, come Saturday, Buffalo Bills football is back, and boy, does that feel great. Um, But I want to thank you again for joining me on this week's episode of the Wandering Buffalo podcast. If you did make it this far, I always ask you like, share, subscribe, tell a friend about the show if you're enjoying it. If you hate the show, check out some of the other shows on the Fanbase Network. All kinds of shows coming out all different days of the week. There's something out there for everybody. If you want Bill's content, check out Buffalo Fanbase. Like I said, there's something for you out there. Um, But that's going to do it for this week. We will see you next week where we will be breaking down real football games happening. Um, So make sure you're tuned in. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss an episode. As always, go Bills.